Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be doing some more fantasy creature drawing today. And this time we're going to look at a genre that's been around since ancient Greek times, okay? We're talking about humanoid fantasy creatures. So that's mixing a human with an animal of some sort, okay? We're going to see lots of examples of this. We'll look at lots of art, and then we'll get to our own drawing. Let's go. Let's first look at the centaur, okay? Again, uh, coming from um, ancient Greek history, right? And here's some examples in ancient Greek art. And, you know, mixing a man with a horse. And or female, as we see here in this one. And this one's a pretty cool take on it with uh, not just the regular human, um, you know, form on top, but it's got these long horns and some ears and it looks definitely a little more um, other than human. Another one coming from way back when as well is uh, a mermaid or merman right this one's from ancient uh greek pottery they did a lot of art on their pottery and there's so many cool takes on the mermaid right and so many different things you can do um that make them look unique right like this one here it's got just not the human form on top but all these different things going on with the color pattern with the uh the head um head fins i don't know what you'd call those and the webbed hands Here's another one based on a lionfish, which looks pretty cool in a different, uh, definitely a different look than a, just a traditional looking mermaid. I like the art style in this one, pretty interesting. And here's a more traditional looking mermaid, but a beautiful painting, just a beautiful painting. And this one I like, um, again, looks a little more traditional, but definitely has a menacing feel to it. I uh, really like the mood they created in this one. Okay, next one we're gonna look at is a minotaur. So here's some ancient Greek examples. And then here's some more um, recent drawings of a minotaur. This one looks particularly um, menacing. Really like the, the face on this one. Okay, looking next at a satyr. All right, this is mixing a, a human with like a goat or maybe a fawn. Kind of just depends. This one, um, obviously a little more animalistic looking, right? Pretty cool. All right, another uh, character in particular is Medusa, where we got some examples here, some ancient Greek art. You can just see Perseus, uh, who's Slater, holding her head, right? If you know the tale, I won't go through it now. And here's uh, some more modern takes on Medusa, right? And this, you know, she traditionally had a bow Obviously snake hair and then the snake body. Uh, this one's got, man, this one looks particularly uh, detailed and has a realism about it, I guess, in the style. And she looks particularly menacing. Okay, we got another one here. Got multiple arms on this one. It's a very nice painting. Okay, uh, another one that comes from uh, a different part of the world. We're looking uh, at English folklore as fairies. Going back, not as far back as um, the ancient Greek ones, but um, you know, a few hundred years old maybe. And then here's some newer drawings of fairies. So we're mixing people with bugs, right? With winged bugs. Uh, and whatever, like wings is just kind of like up to your, uh, you know, the choice of the artist. Um, and you'll see all sorts of things from butterfly wings to just more like dragonfly looking wings. Okay, and then now for some maybe non-traditional ones that I've just kind of run across and thought looked pretty interesting and cool. Octopus guy, no visible face. This one kind of reminded me of a spider or a crab in the face, and then but then, you know, you get kind of a crab-like texture on the arms, but then you get these kind of tentacles and a uh, pretty interesting creature. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what you'd classify that as. Another take on uh, the centaur, kind of, right, but using a cat body instead. Um, so the one on the left's got like a panther kind of looking body but you know the stripes look a little unique and this one's more like uh, maybe a cheetah spots or leopard spots I'm not sure uh, with a tiger in the back all right okay so let's get to our drawing now and we're gonna do a person a, a female in particular with a spider okay and uh, I'm gonna give her a obviously a black widow is gonna give her a very kind of you know deadly vibe okay so we're gonna start with a uh, gesture drawing. So I'm just going to start kind of like I would, like if I was just drawing a regular person. And so I'm thinking about how I'm going to connect these two together. And I, I'm going to do something kind of like a, um, 
centaur. So she'll have the, you know, everything like a human up to her like waist. And then, yeah, then from there I'll attach the, the spider and the legs and, and the back of the spider. All right, so just kind of trying to get the uh, overall shape. And I chose this picture because she's got kind of a little seductive feel to it. And I want that to kind of play into the um, spider, you know, being deadly, right? Like the Black Widow, um, you know, eats its mate after. So I want to give uh, one of this pose, uh, you know, this kind of seductive pose to the upper torso. All right, so I'm trying to get the angle of the head here. I'm kind of starting to build the shapes up a little bit now that I've kind of got the gesture down. Okay, work on her chest, the tilt of the shoulders. Kind of try and get the uh, waist connected here, the rib cage connected to the uh, hips. Okay, so now I've got to think how they're going to connect a little bit, but I have an idea how I can attach it later. Okay, I'm just looking at the spider picture here. I think I'll rough out the spider body right now. And I want it to be kind of big. Okay, so I'm just trying to break up the segments here. So this will be a front segment where her um, torso kind of attaches to. And then I'm gonna put this big kind of shape back there for the, uh, the uh, back of the spider, part where the web comes out. Okay, and that back part dips down there. That's where the web comes out there. So it kind of, uh, it's not just an oval. Let me line it up there. I'm going to fix that a little bit. Okay, we're going to add a little, another segment up in the front. I think that'll look a little better. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little stinger kind of thing in the back. It'll look uh, a little more menacing. Maybe let me get a pincer. How about that? Okay, I think this is gonna work. All right, let's get some legs kind of placed a little bit. I think I gotta think about those next here. Okay. I'm trying to make it, uh, yeah, their body's kind of tilted, uh, the human reference. So I'm gonna try and attach these here. So I'm gonna put like a little, uh, tunicky thing kind of hanging down and like a belt kind of thing kind of covering up how they attach the two you know the spider body and the human body there again i want to make that side even with this side okay so yeah, i want it to look a little tilted as well kind of mirroring the the hips of the the girl I'm just looking at the segments here on the spider legs. Okay, kind of making a little joint here. And okay, bring it down. So it looks like there's one, two, three, four. Yeah, the last like pincer part. One, three. Let's see. Oh yeah, so we got yeah. Three, three segments here. This needs to be a little higher. Okay, so I got these two, and then I got the pointy segment there. Okay, so we got three little segments on these legs. Okay. Can I get the back one here? Let me kind of make this one 
on the other side, opposite side. And like once you figure out the shape, you know, on the first set, um, it's a lot easier to draw the next set, right? Once it's been the style that we're going with, or you're going with, and your drawing is kind of figured out. Okay, let's see. I think I need to fit one more pair of legs here. Right now I got six limbs. Okay, so yeah, spiders have eight limbs, eight appendages. So, okay, we're gonna count the arms and the girl as a set and then we'll have to fit in another set back here. So you have eight. And of course you can do whatever you want for your own creature, but I think it'd be nice to keep it consistent with uh, what a spider really has. Is that gonna work up there? Let's see, let me see what it looks like when I add the other one here. Hmm, is that looking right? I think I can, okay, yeah. Okay. I think I like where this is going here. Okay, so now that I've got everything kind of placed, I'm gonna start getting a little bit of details roughed in before I switch over to the dark pencil. Let's get the hair kind of figured out a little bit. The overall shape of it here. Remember with hair, you, you don't want to draw every strand. You're drawing like the shape, the clumps. Okay, so just kind of in the shape of her face here. Make sure I got that tilt. Okay, midline here for her body. So help me place everything. I kind of made that a little dark. I'll lighten it later. Okay. Her stomach. Bring that back a bit. Okay, so here's a belt kind of thing. I'm gonna work on the clothes now before we get too far along. We'll give her some jewelry, like a big jeweled kind of belt here with a big stone. Okay, a little bit of uh, detail there. Okay, maybe I'll kind of give it like a spider eye look. Where they have multiple eye sets, do multiple like black stones, like, sort of black jewels. I think that'll look cool. Okay, and then from there, I'm going to add a kind of a little tunic. Something kind of hanging down, kind of hiding where the body is joined together. Make it kind of tattered. Work on these a little bit. Something a little more like that, I think. Okay. You know, I'm thinking it'd be kind of cool if we add those those fangs, the spider fangs, maybe, kind of underneath there. You know, I think for me that's like a least part of the spider that I like. <laughs> Right, these fangs look really, these mandible looking things. Kind of, the mouth looks so strange and it's got hairs on it. It's just very weird. 
they kind of look like legs, you know, but they're actual fangs and I don't know. Yeah, I gotta add those in. Those are the creepiest part for me. Who knows, maybe underneath the tunic there's like another a real spider face or something, you know. Okay, let's get some more definition on this body here. Working out the hand a little bit. Kind of get the position of the fingers. Okay, that's all right. Enough to move on to the other hand up there, kind of holding the hair. Kind of bent at the wrist there, bent at the elbow. Thinner at the wrist and it gets a little wider towards the elbow. Can't wait to find the inside of the head arm. Okay. And you gotta figure out what kind of top she's gonna have there. I got a rib cage. Uh, yeah, that's better, I think. She wears some kind of like metal looking bikini kind of looking top. I don't know. That'll fit her kind of temptress and sneering personality here. Okay, figure out some details to put on that at some point. Put like a little, maybe jewel hanging down here, a little necklace kind of thing. I'm gonna knock this back now. And then we can switch to the black pencil. So if you're using the same paper, yeah, I'd use an eraser and knock it back before you add your details. Just enough so you can still see everything, right? You know where everything is, but that it won't interfere too much with your drawing. If you're using like a light table or something, that's even better, because then you can just trace right over it with another paper. And um, of course, all the blue lines or all your rough sketch will be underneath. And that's actually the way I prefer to draw. Um, but, you know, for sketches, it's fine to just have the uh, blue line underneath kind of still there. It's not a big deal. But, yeah, if I wanted to scan this in and paint it in the computer or something, I would definitely want to draw it on a different paper or something. Okay, now for our details. So, got to go for the face first. Again, this is something I always do. Got to make sure the face looks right. If the face doesn't look right, then I might as well just start over because that's always the focal point of um, your drawings, right? Of your characters is the face. The face has got to be um, got to be good. It wouldn't do me any good to draw the rest of it and not have a good face. Let's get the eyebrows above there. Okay, can work out a little details in the eyes here. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the nose. Not like that. 
that nose. I'm gonna do it again. Okay, that's gonna work for me, I think. Get the mouth here next. tend to draw the features, you know, first and then draw the uh, contour of the face around it after. Not sure if that's the best, but that's the way I approach it all the time. I feel like with the uh, features, you can kind of see where the contour goes. And like if I did the other way, I don't think I'd be able to um, yeah, I feel like the, the features define the contour, I guess, more than the contour does the features. I don't know, at least for the way I draw. Okay, let's try and get the hairline here a little bit. So I'm always trying to draw clumps of hair. And I'm always trying to stay where, where it, which uh, direction it's flowing in. I want to get the, uh, like, like where the hair is coming from and going out of and, you know, think about that as I draw hair rather than just like, you know, I don't know what, you get to see a lot of students do like kind of scribbles and stuff rather than thinking about like where the, uh, the hair is flowing from. Okay, so got a little part up here. It's coming down over his shoulders. I'm looking at his hand here. It feels a little low. Always better to make an adjustment as soon as you see a problem. Um, the sooner you catch your adjustments, the less problem you have later. Let me raise it up a little bit, I think. To about there, and then let's see where their hand is again. Move it up here, thumb, fingers. Just want to get a quick rough there and look. Yeah, I think that's good. I'm gonna knock it back now. Okay, so a little more hair coming down here. Also on the other side. Do a few more lines in there to kind of help bring out the face, making that hair a little more, uh, a little darker. Okay, let's get the hand shape kind of placed there. Fingers out to the wrist and down to the forearm. You can see a little bit of one of the uh, the, the meat kind of of the arm, kind of um, defining the muscle there a little bit. You can see a little split. I think she'd have some sort of. Um, bracelets or something, right? Lots of jewels, maybe. Part of the seductive feel. I think I made that too strong there. So. Okay, now I gotta define this, uh, this top here, her bikini top thing. Do 
you some details here and like where it's connected. Trying to channel a little bit of a Return of the Jedi vibe here. Trying to figure out how this is going to look. I might have like some kind of outer metal part that's kind of decorative. A little point there. So still want to look dangerous. pattern there. Get that jewel in there on her necklace. And put a little bit of shadow under her neck there. I'm going to add a little bit of shading to this picture, help define it. Okay. Okay, so from behind that, I've got her waist coming out, but I better get this arm first. Since it's um, on top of the rib cage, right? The rib cage coming from behind it from this angle. I don't like the way that connects to fix that. Okay, trying to keep uh, the definition of the arm kind of subtle. But with the right shape up there with the bicep and tricep, now we're down to the forearm and the elbow and then the forearm underneath. Kind of rounded, but slightly. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Just to help see the detail. Okay, rib cage and stomach. Her stomach button there. Belly button, I guess. That's stomach button. Okay, and there's her waist. And that'll bring me down to this, which I still think this is high. So yeah, I'm gonna start the wrist there. I made that first form way too long now that I'm looking at it. Okay, so we're gonna go with the thumb there. And I'm going to get the rest of the fingers kind of shaped right here. So I'm just kind of looking at the reference. It kind of really helps to see the position of the fingers. Um, it'll look a lot more realistic, at least for me it will, than trying to freehand it. Or Fingers always do such weird things. And I'm cutting in here to apologize for me being off the screen. Sorry about that. I did not realize that when I was doing this walkthrough. Unfortunately, when I try to zoom in a lot of times, I get too um, focused on the drawing and I forget to look up at the screen. So please forgive me. And you'll just have to see what you can see once I uh, move this back up to the screen here. Okay, just trying to define the form a little bit. And whoops, I just realized I was off the screen. I'm sorry, everybody. Forgive me. I'm just trying to get these hands right here. A little bit of the detail of the um, tendons there. Okay, let's see. Got to darken up the hair just a little bit there. Draw some final details here before I move on. I want to make sure it looks like it's going in her hand. Let's smooth these out a little bit. Add another little curve down there. And I want to add a little bit of a contrast so we can see that there's um, metal part or a different you know at least a different color part on the top 
Also, anytime you can add contrast, it'll help define it against uh, the skin, right? So to make this uh, darker, we'll be able to recognize it um, against her lighter skin. And just hint the rib there. If you had too many ribs, they look uh, emaciated, or, you know. All right, let's define this uh, belt, this jeweled belt thing. Okay, I wanna make sure it looks like it's turned slightly. And I'm gonna try and make these um, jewels really kind of darken the little reflection on them. So they look like jewels. Okay, get the highlight on the right side. So I'm gonna keep that top right as my lighting source. Draw a really thin border around it. Make sure it looks embedded. Okay, now for the little ones here. I want to add the same uh, highlight spot on the uh, top right to all these as well. You want to stay consistent with your light source. Try and give this a little detail as well here. Okay, I want to give it a little depth up top there. Just so it looks like it's got some volume. And add this little uh, rim around it here. All right, now for the tunic. I'm gonna do some uh, diaper folds coming down, which is those back and forth folds. I don't want this bottom to be really tattered. Kind of hint at the transformation, right, from this beautiful top into everything below being um, not beautiful, right? I need a little fingernail on the end there. Black fingernails, right? Okay, trying to hint at a little bit of uh, shading again on the left side, right? If I'm gonna stay consistent with my highlight being on the top right. Okay, now for the spider part. So I'm gonna kind of work in the front here, in this mandible. I'm going to keep the same lighting uh, source on the whole thing, right? So this uh, left side is going to be darker. And then I'm going to kind of keep a little highlight on the uh, top right. So those hairs are, I think, creeps me out there. So I want to add these little hairs all over the place. You know, spiders and insects have these little hairs. Obviously, they won't be very little on this creature, right? But I still want to put them there. Okay, let's get this other man mandible thing here. Dark on the bottom left, underneath the tunic there. And no real rhyme or reason like where I'm putting the hairs, just kind of sporadically sticking them around, right? And that's part of one of the things that makes it so weird is like the, uh, they just kind of stick out all over the place, these little hairs. Okay, trying to work out the connection here, in this first little segment. And yeah, I want to make all this pretty dark over here. It's going to, again, kind of bring some contrast to the drawing. 
helping us see the uh, human form a little bit. And I think I'm going to just do this kind of accordion thing, kind of looking connection there. And then you get to this exoskeleton, you know. So like the joints um, by the body just make this kind of uh, accordion thing. Same with right here, where it connects to the other um, part. And I don't know if you noticed, so I'm trying to shade this a little differently uh, to give it a little different feel than uh, the, you know, something like the jewel, right? Where I'm trying to be a little more precise with uh, these legs. I'm trying to be a little, um, I don't know, have, give it a different texture. And I don't know how to, the softer shade kind of thing, I guess. I don't know how to describe it. Okay, now the second leg here. Same kind of thing. I'm, I'm kind of just using the um, unsharpened part of the pencil, you know, as you kind of use a pencil, it dulls out. And I'm just kind of using that side to kind of get this softer shade going here. All right. And even on this last segment here, kind of this little accordion looking thing. And on this bottom thing, I think I want to give it this serrated kind of jagged thing, right? So it looks a little more menacing and a little more uh, threatening, right? Like it can cut too, you know, not just not just uh, impale, but it can kind of slice. And I'm keeping the, the shading kind of loose and uh, irregular in parts, right? Just to, just to give it a different feel than kind of a nice, crisp, smooth, um, you know, texture. Right, this front one here. Little tiny hairs, don't want to forget those. Let's zoom out a bit here. Now we get to the bigger part of the body. And find this last leg on the uh, right side here. Make this one a little lighter. Um, also to give it just some, you know, a little bit of depth. And generally as I move back here, I'm putting less detail. So it kind of helps um, create that depth, right? And I can create like a... Uh, slightly unfocused look or a atmospheric um, perspective look, right? Where, um, you know, I mean, I know this is just a creature, but like it still, you know, kind of creates like a look of um, uh, there's atmosphere in the air, right? That kind of gets in the way and that you can see detail more when it's closer to you, okay? All right, let's get to this other side here. These legs, I'll try to finish this off. It's been a long drawing. But anytime, like, I find anytime I got a person involved, a human, uh, the drawings tend to just go longer, like, you know, and I think the reason why for me is that uh, when drawing people, you've got to really make it, um, like, precise, because we're very familiar with what people look like, you know, like, we look at people all day, and, um, with, like, with a spider, it, you know, like, I can't recognize where all the mistakes are as easily because I, mean, I generally just don't, you know, I don't look at spiders this close up um, often, you know, not enough to recognize when something's a little off. Like, you know, I'm sure if another spider was looking at this picture, they'd be like, oh, man, those legs are way off and uh, that abdomen in the back is way too big or, you know, whatever. Um, and I, I know it's, you know, a fantasy creature, but still, you know, um, those kind of things just aren't as easily recognized. So I, f I feel like I can go a lot faster when I'm drawing like a creature uh, rather than a human. And being that this has a human portion to it, uh, it kind of tends to slow me down quite a bit, make sure it looks, you know, acceptable as a, as a human. That's my theory, at least why, uh, people drawing people takes a lot longer for me. Who knows, it could just be slow. Um, all right, as we're moving on to the other side here, let's 
Um, it's going to clean this up a little bit, knock back these, these blue lines a bit, get them out of the way. Okay, we're getting there though, we're getting there, it should be done pretty soon. I'm just going to kind of finish off these legs. So I want to really kind of define the shape on this front one. And these corners here, this segment here as well. Here's my little accordion connection to that second leg. I'm going to get some dark shading under here. Seeing that it's on the opposite side of our highlight, so it should be pretty dark. I'm not sure why I moved uh, this time. I'm just realizing I drew uh, right to left. So usually I try to go left to right when I do the details because uh, it'll keep me from smearing the picture. But luckily these Prismacolors don't really smear that much. Um, so not like a regular pencil, you know, a regular graphite pencil uh, tends to smear a lot more. Uh, these ones it takes a bit more to smear them. So it doesn't matter as much. Um, highly recommend them if you are um, if you like drawing, um, the, the thin Prismacolor colored blue, uh, colored blue, colored pencils. Um, I think the, I think the, I mean, the brand is Prismacolor and the, um, uh, product is the, the color erase, I think is what they call it. Color race. And they have some other colored pencils that are a lot thicker and that, that are not meant to erase. So I'm not recommending those ones. These ones are more like in the uh, shape of a regular pencil, but I, I enjoy drawing with them a lot. And um, I've always liked Prismacolors, but I, um, uh, in particular, like liked or started using these for uh, just sketching and stuff because they don't reflect as much as a regular pencil does. So when I was showing my classes, and you know I've got a light on above, and I have demonstrations when I'm in school, you know I, I teach. And, uh, and I'm projecting my drawing, it, there's a reflection with the graphite pencils. And so these don't reflect as much. There's still a little bit of a uh, sheen to it, but nothing like a, um, not, not as much as a graphite pencil at all. All right, just gonna define the legs a little bit here as we get to the final details here. I'm trying to go quick now, get the, this accordion section done and then Moving on to this shape I've kind of uh, got going where it's kind of thicker towards the base of this segment and thinner at the top. There's some quick shading on here. And again, I can find that I can go a lot faster once I kind of defined the style, right? And kind of defined it on the other legs on the left side. Now these right ones can go quite a bit faster. Okay, here's the bottom. Just kind of want to get this thing knocked out here in the bottom. There's a little, her little pincer looking stingery thing down there. And uh, never be afraid to move your paper um, to a better angle. Um, you know, Hands, I, I feel like hands move naturally in a certain angle. And, uh, you know, when you have paper, you can kind of rotate it. So whatever angle your hands color best at, you know, or shade best at or draw best at. All right, got a nice little tone back there. Let's see, I don't know if I want to add more detail than that. Kind of keep it in the back. And again, less detail and things further away. Let's kind of finish off this leg at least. And I'm trying to make that serrated pattern irregular, kind of. I don't want it to, I want it to look a little um, jagged, you know, and not exactly the same on each side or in each uh, segment on each leg. Clean that up up there. Just want to pull out a little bit of color there. OK, 
Okay, let's see here. What do I want to do? I'm going to add some little bits of detail here. And I want to, I want to get that, that uh, Black Widow pattern in there. So I'm going to keep that a little bit lighter. Can we see it? Eh, it's not that visible. I'm going to shade it in a little bit. Just smear it. I want to keep it dark because it's underneath, but I want to insinuate it there. All right, let's get this last leg knocked out. Add some quick tone to it. Again, not fussing about the detail as much as I did the other legs that are closer. Using more like a silhouette. And uh, I think that'll pretty much just do it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys got a nice looking uh, creature and hope to see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.